Hey guys, thanks for tuning by. Welcome to my channel and in this video, I will show you how I made this ESP826601 development board with a built-in programmer and tons of other features. So without further ado, let's get started. Well, these are all the components required to make the project. The detailed list of the components will be there in the video description below. So do check it out. I first cut out a small piece of ferro board measuring 5 by 5 cm on which I'll be positioning all my components. Since the CH340 programmer is only available in the SMD version, I first made a breakout board to convert it into a dip version. I've made a video previously about it, you can check it out. The link will be in the video description and the i button above. To get started, I used Easy EDA to roughly draw a schematic of my project so that I can have a rough idea of all the components that I'll be using. The schematic will be in the video description as well. Before moving ahead to solder all the components on the Vero board, it is always a good practice to test your circuit on a breadboard and make necessary changes if required. Over here, I'm setting up the breadboard connections with my DIY ESP8266 breakout board which will help me access the pins easily. After successfully having done the basic connection on the breadboard, it was now time to upload a test sketch on the ESP826601 for which I used this jumper to pull GPIO pin 0 to ground which puts the ESP8266 in programming mode and then connected it to my laptop. The test sketch which I uploaded was the blink sketch from the examples of the Arduino IDE. I selected the generic ESP8266 board from the list of boards, selected the proper COM port and then uploaded it to the board. And yes, the upload was successful and we can see the LED blinking at an interval of 1 second, just as we expected. One amazing feature of these miniature boards is also the ability to support and communicate with I2C devices such as this OLED display. I loaded up a test program which displays a series of animations and it turned out to be successful. The basic programming tests have been done, now let's move forward to make the board. Before directly moving ahead with the soldering process, it's always a good idea to have a rough estimate of all the placement of the components so that the connections are neat and tidy and we can use minimal jumper wires, which makes our circuit not only look good but also secure from any loose connections. The first set of components which I went ahead and soldered were the micro USB breakout board, the crystal oscillator and the ceramic capacitors along with the CH340 programming board. The next group of components which I soldered were the power supply components like the AMS1117 which generates a stable 3.3V which is required for the ESP8266. 
Mind you, the ESP8266 is 3.3 volt tolerant and any voltage above 3.7 volts can seriously damage the board. Next up is the heart of the project, the ESP board itself, along with which I have attached two LEDs to the TX and RX pins, which can give us a visual representation of when the code is being uploaded. Lastly, I will be soldering a switch which can put the ESP into either programming mode or functional mode along with it a 4 pin female header which can give us access to the two GPIO pins of the ESP and the power which is VCC and ground. And with that, our soldering of all the components is complete and the board is almost ready. It is now a good time to check for any faulty solder joints or jumper wires in order to make sure that there are no errors in our circuit before powering it on. Next I went ahead and added 4 spacers to the 4 corners of the board which is an optional step but provides good isolation between the solder joints underneath the Vero board and any surface that you will be putting the board on. And with all the four spacers attached, I've also added a layer of tape to add extra protection to the solder joints underneath the Vero board. With this, our board is finally complete. Well, it's now time to upload some more test codes to make sure that our board works correctly. For this, I grabbed a micro USB cable, plugged in one side to the development board and the other side to my laptop again. I flicked the switch to programming mode and uploaded the previously discussed blink code and as you can see the TX and RX LEDs are blinking very fast indicating that the code is being uploaded to the ESP board. And as you can see the board has no problem executing the blink sketch. Next up was the OLED display which I could easily fix on the female headers which gives me access to the power and the GPIO pins of my development board. I flicked the switch to programming mode again and connected it to my laptop. In the program I configured the GPIO pins 2 and 0 as SDA and SCL for the I2C communication and loaded some animations which I discussed previously.
After successfully uploading the code, the OLED lights up and displays all the animations I had programmed for. Turn the switch to functional mode and press the reset once to run the program once you have uploaded the code. The reset functions also works fine whenever you press it, the board resets itself. I hope you like the build of the development board of this rather underrated ESP82601. Share your feedbacks in the comment section on whether I should go ahead and order a professional PCB for my project. I have some interesting projects planned up with this development board, so if you want to hear me again, consider subscribing to my channel for more such content. Till then, bye bye.